And They'll it was a great big, a great big one. But it is a good, it's a good sized bird. First time I've ever seen one here. Call the meeting to order. Ben and Jonathan will be absent this evening. Item two, at the commissioner's request, discuss any item of concern on the regular session agenda of March the 5th, 2019. Anybody? Nothing? Have no concerns. Nope. Hearing none, item three, update on various road construction projects. Item 3.1, Cleveland and Chestnut <coughs> intersection. Robert. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioners, <coughs> city manager, Colonel. Sir. Good to see you. Uh, this will be an update on a, on some uh, road projects uh, ongoing in the city of Enid currently and in, in the future. And I'm going to start off uh, actually with a future project, and I'm going to go through uh, where we're at on the planning design phase that project we expect in the future. And that is Cleveland Street, actually north of Cleveland Street from the Burlington Northern Railroad to Willow Road. And what we have an exhibit here, uh, north is, is up, and we show... The uh, improved roads uh, of Willow Road, which is multi-lane, as well as Van Buren, of course, and Garriott Road on the south side is shown by these arrows. And in the center of the exhibit here, we show Cleveland Street. And you can see the uh, <laughs> south half mile has been uh, improved, <coughs> four lane. We have a current project, two projects actually going on to improve the intersection of Cleveland Chestnut and uh, uh, Cleveland Boulevard up to the railroad tracks, about a half mile. And we'll cover that in a little more detail a little later. Uh, but I want to talk about the, um, uh, the next project coming on uh, our tab for Federal Aid Urban System, which is Cleveland Street from the railroad to uh, Willow Road, shown in red uh, on this location map. And you can see we have multiple lanes all the way around, and this would uh, connect it up. One other item is we have one project on the Federal Aid Urban System left to develop, and that's Cleveland Street from uh, just south of Chestnut to Maple in here. Uh, and that would close out this four-lane loop system. Okay, details of the, the project, this upcoming project. Um, it's about 2,500 feet, about a half mile, of four lane developing in a four lane arterial street. Um, it would widen to four lanes, and also it would include uh, improvement of the railroad crossing as part of that project. Um, it does require some adjustment alignment to accommodate the existing development, particularly on the west side, it's fully developed. And uh, we'll have to realign some utilities I'll get into that in a little bit. We will include sidewalks and continuation of the trail on up Cleveland Street <coughs> to Willow Road. And we'll integrate the stormwater system in that, in that area into the road system project. Um, I'm going to give you this overall map of, uh, of the location, which is now, for this exhibit, we've turned it so north is to the right. And Willow Road is on the right side of the exhibit, railroad tracks on the left, and uh, Cleveland Street is shown. In, in the center. And I'm going to go into it a little bit closer here, starting on the south end or with the left of that drawing. And on this map, we have color coded the proposed right of way needs we think for the roadway improvement, generally on the uh, east side of the roadway. Uh, proposed easement needs, generally on the east side as well. And then uh, uh, temporary easements. Uh, there are some temporary easements shown in a couple areas for some driveways work. Uh, existing right-of-way shown in blue, and that's uh, uh, the roadway right-of-way as well as the railroad right-of-way. And then there's some existing uh, easements that will be shown in certain areas of the, of the map. As well as proposed pavement improvements are shown in uh, yellow here. You, they fade out, but they're kind of the edge of the uh, highlighted area. And then we have the drainage improvements. Now, I know we show, anticipate about adding about six pipes on the railroad crossing here. To improve the uh, flow of the, uh, the drainage from this uh, new improvement system, a new roadway improvement, and to relieve some of the um, uh, impacts that are occurring now from water backing up in this railroad crossing. I want to point out the additional right of way on the south end here is laid out in, because we have a property owner who access is a byway of the railroad right of way, and that's going to be impossible in the future with the improvements of the sidewalk and the railroad crossing and the signals. Uh, so we've provided some right-of-way to merge these two drives together to give them a common access on our public right-of-way. Uh, the next uh, exhibit is just a little bit to the north of that. Uh, again, shows uh, the right-of-way needs, which this right-of-way need would be a total of 30, 33 plus 27 or 60 feet, which is a standard right-of-way we acquire <laughs> when development occurs. Uh, the easement would provide for providing drainageway 
uh, along uh, swell along uh, that uh, that area, which would be picked up into uh, drainage pipes and go to the east side and carried away. Eventually, that easement could go away as development occurs. But currently, because uh, we're dealing with existing ground there, we need a, a swell to pick up those low areas and get them to the drainage pipes. The next section is on the um, north end of the project, and a little bit of right of way needed to, uh, to make this transition from. Uh, uh, our alignment to the south to match the intersection to the north, and a major uh, box culvert plan to, to carry the water that comes in from the north across these properties to get it uh, across the roadway. There will be also, I mentioned, a parallel stormwater improvement project that will provide some type of uh, detention for, this, for the stormwater. It's being handled in stormwater. It's not part of the road project at, at this time, but it will be developed along with the road project in parallel. Okay. Uh, schedule as best we can determine. There's the next step is get environmental clearance, which is done by the Department of Transportation. Uh, we've been working with them for a number of months now. They are working to get that cleared. When a right of way clear, when a right of way document is cleared, either the, excuse me, when the environmental clearance is provided, we've uh, meet those hurdles and provide and, and cover those issues. Then we can start the right of way acquisition and utility relocation project, which is going to be carried over to the 2019 and 2020 year mainly because of this, the environmental clearance has to be completed first. Uh, then the next phase, after we complete right away and utilities, we're ready to go to uh, consider uh, construction. Of course, it's going to be developing the funding and doing the construction, which will be some date in the future after complete this in next year's budget. Also, the railroad crossing, uh, the schedule that will be determined by the Department of Transportation. We're just coordinating with them so they match up. Traffic management is one of the questions we want to cover. Uh, this project would provide for uh, through traffic pretty well throughout the project. Uh, two phases of construction, or two phases of traffic management. The current project has about six phases because of the intersection. Without an intersection, we have two phases. The first one, move the traffic to the west, do some temporary improvements, move two lanes to the west, construct the east side lanes. Phase two would move the traffic to the east side of the roadway, and then construct the west lanes. Um, that's pretty well doable in this project. There will be some temporary uh, closures for fruit traffic during when we have drainage structures come across. Uh, we may have to have uh, some closures for a week or, week or so to get those things accomplished. And then also in the schedule will be the utility locations, which we have a water line to relocate. We know there's some fiber optics running down this road. We also know that there's telephone and electric that will require some adjustments as well. So we'll start uh, coordinating those projects when environmental clearance is provided. Okay. Project update. Uh, design consultant on this project is Bowen Associates out of uh, Oklahoma City, and they have submitted 60% plans to ODOT for the review. They're somewhat beyond the 60% plan, but we submitted that for ODOT. We can't really go to 90% until they complete their review of the process. Uh, environmental clearance, environmental review I've talked about is, is being done by Department of Transportation, and we know they're moving on that project, but we don't have a date yet when they'll have that clearance uh, available. And then uh, right-of-way plans and our have been provided by uh, our consultant. Uh, we're developing the uh, documents now, but again, we won't be able to proceed with actual acquisition until uh, this is clear. Uh, we'll point out, we did conduct a public forum uh, last week uh, and presented everything you've seen prior to this slide was presented to the public uh, for their comment and input. Uh, a little discussion on uh, drainage, a little discussion on scheduling and timing. Uh, let me go to the principal questions. Uh, what, is, what is ODOT's part of that uh, plan? Uh, this is federal way to urban system. So um, the plan from ODOT provides a grant. They'll provide a grant for a project up to $1 million of the construction cost. <coughs> uh, so they'll provide that. Uh, that, uh, of course, we need to get the environmental clearance done, right away and utilities done, and then we'll go into, let's see if I got it in here. Is that then we'll go into agreement with ODOT for funding, and they will fund up to $1 million for construction. Is that, does that consider all three phases? Uh, no, each, well, each all three phases. No, they, that's $1 million per project in, the, in this. What's currently under construction is two projects, so ODOT was, uh, did participate to $2 million in those two projects that are under construction. Uh, this would be one project in, in for this phase now. The next phase, if I go back to the beginning, well, the next phase going to Elm would be a future project that we consider fund, grant funds for. 
so their involvement is not as much as Willow from Cleveland to Oakwood. Yes, it's there. The, the um, actually a NAP project. It was I going think two they two and a half million dollars, wasn't it? Yes, they're 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 funding a NAP project with seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Yeah, the the grants have moved up. There are more funds available now than in the past. <clears throat> uh, future tasks again, pending the ODOT review of 60 plans, will go to final plans, and then uh, the railroad crossing plans will be uh, uh, scheduled and conducted by the Department of Transportation. We'll work with them that. Um, we got right of way acquisition to do again. It's after environmental clearance. We'll probably budget in next year's program as well as utility relocation. And then we get down to this, which you're, I think, talking about the construction <coughs> agreement. After all these things are done, then we'll work with the Department of Transportation on a construction agreement, which will provide the funding up to a million dollars, which they've been able to do that in all of our projects uh, recently, and the scheduling of the project, the construction. What's the status of the Cleveland and Chesnut, <coughs> Chesnut intersection? Okay. Uh, if if there's no more questions on this, we'll move to that one. Well, I, I do have one question. Yes. The, I, I'm assuming that the trail is going to be on the east side of the road, right? Uh, it, it's on the, uh, it is on the uh, west side of the road. Well, the it's side. on the west side to the, to the south, and uh, we want to try to continue that uh, to the north because we really don't want to cross, trying to keep from crossing okay. the trail, cross so the roadway. What you're building there then on, on the east side is just a side wall. That's correct. Okay, so the trail is going to be on the west side. <laughs> Is there any plan to get that across Willow since the trail on Willow is on the north side, right? Not as part of this project, Commissioner. But yes, in the master plan, the, the, the trail will, the trail will come right up with Crossland. The trail will come right up to the intersection. Okay. Yeah. But they're on their own as far as getting on to and then across the other side. But it'll be a standard, it's, it's, right now it's a standard pedestrian crossing. Yeah, okay. I'm just curious. I had seen where there was a sidewalk there, but I couldn't tell how wide it was, so I wasn't sure whether yeah, the trail was going to be on the east side or the west. A five-foot sidewalk, probably on the on the uh, east side, and a ten-foot trail on the west side. Okay. So, so the trail down on farther to the south is not has not been built yet. It's being constructed on in the, in the current project. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Take your life in your own hands if you go looking, looking for it. <laughs> um, what, what's the status of the boulevard? Okay. Uh, well, I have one more question on, I'm sorry, on that back ahead. slide. Um, can you go back one more slide? I think it was uh, one more. Okay. I've heard from a lot of constituents that live in the area on the southern part of, uh, part of Hunter's Hill there. Yes. <laughs> they talk about the flooding that they have. So is the water going to be routed uh, like under the railroad tracks to go to that connection? Two the things. Connection area? Uh, these, if, these houses here, and I've been down here many times, these houses are built up and they, they need to be because uh, uh, this cul-de-sac, will water will back up on it. It'll back up in this area, probably back yeah. up in these yards. Yeah. These, uh, uh, <clears throat> these additional pipes here will mitigate any, pa any impact from the roadway okay. on the uh, and increasing any other hassle. It would take any water, additional water off the roadway will be handled by the additional piping. However, that does not by itself solve the problem here, and we're aware of that. I'm going to go forward and recall. We know they have water water from the north coming on to the project here, right. and this this water is going to have to be resolved by, uh, uh, by means of the, providing some additional detention, and there's a couple options being looked at how to handle that, uh, that option. So there will be a a North Swan Drain project will parallel this project to address this water coming onto the roadway. Uh, but it's not, I didn't address it here because we don't have it settled yet and it's not part of the roadway plans. But yes, this water is going to have to be, there's going to be some detention, uh, either use some existing detentions available or build some additional detention to address that problem. Right. But that problem is from existing problem. Right. Uh, the placement of the pipe system will resolve any issues from additional water based on the roadway project. So the <coughs> Yeah, that won't help them at all, I don't guess. Won't help them, won't hurt them. It'll help them some. It'll help them. But it won't solve the problem. Uh, but we do have a plan to solve that problem as well. Yeah, they say the water is draining from the streets <coughs> its way down to that cul-de-sac and then just sits there. Yes. And it has no place to go. Yes. Well, this will, uh, that is because there is, I think, four or five pipes in here, but there are different elevations. That issue will pretty well be solved with improvement. That low water flow will be solved. These will be at a lower elevation and will carry that water <coughs> So it will be an improvement. They, 
the, uh, the low water system, the, the cyst problem they're seeing now will go away, but it will not, that's, but it doesn't necessarily solve the 100 year event from existing conditions. Okay. We're going to do additional work in the stormwater plan. But it will solve this localized project of just water setting in there. Okay? Don't they, those four pipes drain south into that? Uh, right, they drain south into our, into our detention facility. It's designed to take that flow. What's the status of the boulevard? Okay, let's go back to that. <clears throat> I didn't see it on there anywhere. Right, we're. It's in the next presentation. Uh, next presentation Cleveland Street, Chestnut Avenue to Burley Northern Railroad and the intersection project. I want to update on that, just do a fast update. Again, you know, we have the intersection project here on Cleveland and Chestnut, and then we have the Cleveland Boulevard project, and they're under construction. Uh, this is the current traffic pattern that's in, in place out there. Um, of course, we have two-way traffic north of the intersection, but the intersection south is uh, uh, under construction and not open at, the, at this time. This is the uh, next phase, phase four, for the traffic pattern, which will have two-way traffic all the way through. Uh, they'll move the traffic to the east, uh, east lanes, and then, because they've, uh, they've constructed the east lanes to the north and to the south, mostly, and on the south side of Chestnut. So this phase will move the traffic to those new lanes. We have a little bit of the intersection work down here, but to the new lanes to the north, to the south, and on uh, on the south side on Chestnut, and we'll have two lane traffic all the way through. We'll still have one way traffic on Chestnut because the right of the construction is just too narrow to get two lanes through there uh, at this time. Um, so that is the plan. That's going to be the next phase. It's coming up in the near future. I wish I could give you a date, but based on the cold weather we've got, we have, and the conditions we have, I can't give you a solid date. But the next phase is coming up fairly quickly. There, we have just a little more work to do down here to make that transition, and then you'll see that transition take place uh, within the near future. So, contract time is through. It still seems to be appropriate for completion. Completion in uh, August 19. That's what the contract time is. Looks good. Uh, getting ready to change to phase four, the traffic pattern I just showed on the exhibit there. Coming up really soon, but uh, uh, until we get, uh, we just need to get a little better consistent weather pattern so we can get that final pavement down and give it cured, and then that will occur. Uh, two lanes constructed on all directions right now, except for that connection to the intersection. 50% uh, of the intersection is complete. It's been completed on one side. We got to switch traffic to the other side. Stormwater piping is 80% complete, all of it to the south, and on the chestnut side are complete, but we have a little work to do north of the intersection that we've got to move the traffic off of to complete. And that's it. So that's where the project is at. Uh, I would expect that change order to come, come, or come uh, fairly quickly. We've been trying to get there for the, I tell you, we've been trying to get there for the last two weeks, and the weather just has not allowed it. So is the weather what's put everything at a standstill it is a, it's been it's at a standstill longer than the last two weeks though it's been pretty quiet over there for a while because trust me i have people tell me every day <laughs> how quiet it is on that corner yep so well, they yeah they've been doing a little work at the uh, holdings driveway and getting that work but you're right the the weather and the condition is just uh uh has slowed the uh, base work down they've got what they have to do now is they have to finish up the slab on this on the south end on the east side of Cleveland in front of Holdings so they can transition that traffic over. And that's been the, uh, the key holdup. Just can't get that uh, uh, stabilized and in place until it actually gets, we got to get some uh, above freezing temperatures and let the and soil dry out. Have you got the boulevard somewhere by in the future right here? Uh, this is, this includes the, uh, uh, this plan includes I don't show, but it includes the boulevard and the intersection, so it's... The boulevard is from Chestnut to the railroad track. Right. Go back. So the west lane... Right. Uh, how, how wide is the space in between the two lanes? Boulevard area would be about, uh, uh, about 10 feet. Boulevard, I think it's a 10-foot boulevard. I understand that, but I mean, you, the east lane is being built. It looks like the west lane is going to be quite a ways separated. From the east lane, about ten feet. Boulevard. Is that all? Mm -hmm. Huh. Well, it, it looks like they've done some dirt work there, though, for the for the west lane. Is that not correct? <clears throat> They'll push it around. Uh, they're they're probably doing some. They've got to do some work in there to get the uh, 
apartments uh, across those west lanes to the east lane. They got to get those out during the when they move this traffic over to the east lanes. Yeah. You're talking about right in here. Yeah. I know they will have to build this east lanes up a little bit to get the uh, apartments over to the west line because the new lanes are higher right. in the north section, and they're probably doing some work in here to build this up to get get the apartments across, get access across there. But I'm just talking about the west lane. You said the west lane is only going to be 10 feet from the east lane. Well, there'll be a 10-foot median between okay. the lanes. We'll have two lanes. We'll have 24-foot of pavement, uh, which will be the uh, northbound lanes, which will be the east, which are pretty well paved. And then there'll be 24-foot of pavement, which is the southbound lanes, which are the west side. And about, it'll be a 10-foot median in between. Okay. Well, the reason I'm asking is that from the dirt work, it looked like it could be wider than that. And no, it's, I think that's about right. Oh, the other not... thing is, too, a number of people have asked how, what's going to happen up there when they get to the railroad tracks. How are we going to, in, in the interim, shift the traffic up there at the, at the railroad uh, crossing? Uh, the, the, pavement, the pavement stops just uh, uh, south of the railroad tracks, and the, the lanes will merge back to two, have to merge back, merge back to two lanes. Sorry, I didn't bring that exhibit here, but they'll do yes, that, they'll merge they'll do back. That on, they'll do that on the south they'll, side of the tracks. Yes, yeah, so they'll actually pave up further, but then they'll have, uh, we'll have striping that will bring the traffic, merge it back down to two lanes mm -hmm. before it gets to the end of the pavement. So the, although the pavement will come up right just short of the tracks, just back a few hundred feet, they'll merge that traffic, have to bring it back to two lanes. So we'll have some additional pavement out there that'll be available when we build the railroad crossing there. So we can't get four lanes across the crossing. That's in the next project. You're correct. Was there a lot of confusion about the railroad track at West Willow with ODOT? Uh, well, there wasn't a lot of discussion at the meeting about it, but yes, there was, uh, it was, uh, there was some problem with coordinating with, uh, wasn't a problem coordinating with ODOT. We, that worked out pretty well. They had the timing pretty well. The railroad just, you took their time in doing their doing their work. They were there first. They're uh, they're very hard to, to push. That's right. Get in touch with them tomorrow. Yeah. Is that road that goes back toward Rolling Oaks going to be problematic if you're trying to narrow into two lanes just south of the tracks there? Uh, no, it'll be a work. In not in, no, no. We have relocated. As you recall, we relocated yeah. this okay. drive. It was close to the intersection. We moved okay. it back to the intersection. Yeah. So we could get some clearance in there. Uh, but it shouldn't be, it won't be a problem at all. I think we've got it relocated where to work very well. All right. They've got that in the plan, no problem. Okay. I want to talk about US 81 Bridge, <coughs> Highway 81 Bridge. This is a no dot project. It's not, not a local project, but uh, we've had some involvement with it. They have this project on going on again. I'll just locate it. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the bridge, everybody knows the bridge. It's across, it's a bypass over what would be chestnut under underneath. This exhibit north is to the front and this is Van Buren or US Highway 81 shown here and chestnut coming in here. Uh, currently they have the east lanes closed and the bridge is pretty well gone. And they have uh, all the traffic is on the west bridge or actually two bridges there and they have two lane traffic on, on that section. Well, we know that they've completed about 25% of the value of the work, uh, the, they've demolished pretty well demolished the east side bridge and that section's gone. They have placed uh, two of the six pier sections that go in to support the new bridge project. Uh, and they have, and currently the work is, uh, they're working on building the, uh, the columns or the uh, pier heads for those uh, uh, two sections. And they're also working on the retaining wall, uh, which, uh, go back, the retaining wall is on the uh, southeast side of the project along this point. And there is some, uh, those forms will have a, um, there uh, have some artistic uh, uh, st structures, I think, to actually have some scissor tails in those forms that go in along uh, that retaining wall. So that's actually being, uh, that's what they uh, currently are working on. And they're also, what we do is work on maintaining the pavement and striping on the west side of the bridge. Um, there has been some certain concerns about that pavement deteriorating and causing some potholes and striping has uh, been brought up as an issue and uh, they have that, uh, the contractor has that on his schedule to be in the near future be working on that issue as well. So work on piers, retain walls, etc. Contract time for completion of this project, August 2020. It's uh, still the anticipated uh, completion date and uh, schedule for switching traffic uh, 
uh, from to the other side of the road is, is to be determined. Uh, the contractor has not uh, uh, officially pro uh, provided the schedule for that yet, it's, but it's sometime in the future uh, because we're working on two of the uh, six uh, uh, piers, so they have another four to, uh, to develop there. Any other questions I can answer on uh, the project? How reasonable do you think August 2020 is? Oh, I think it's, uh, I think it's very reasonable. It's, you know, it's, it's a year, it's over a year, contract? over a year and a half off. Is there a bonus in, in the contract if they finish sooner than August 2020? Uh, Mayor, I do not know that. I don't recall one being in, in the contract. Sure, either. Sure would be nice though. We should <laughs> put one in there. Yeah. <laughs> Although I don't think I want anybody to hurry on a bridge. Do I don't think I want anybody to hurry on the bridge. No, it's right. sketchy the way it is. Next project I'm going to present, if you're ready, is on Leona Mitchell Boulevard. And again, we locate this project. Leona Mitchell is a boulevard bridge is across uh, Boggy Creek. And what I have here is exhibit north is to the top. Garriott Road is shown across the top. And we show Van Buren on the left. And this is uh, what's going to cross and the trees across the south portion is Boggy Creek, and this is Leona Mitchell Boulevard crossing at that location. Uh, final plans are pretty well complete. We have the plans for the road improvement on hands. Uh, we are working on preparing the bidding documents for that to get that out to the bid in the near future. Uh, the cost estimate is $1.2 million. Uh, it is not a budgeted project, so uh, uh, we are working uh, with the uh, finance department on working up uh, uh, the, method and the method for financing that project. Uh, it is a uh, total deck replacement, so bidding is pending, uh, getting the finance in place, and we're working at uh, now. A uh, little bit on the plans. We just for, show a copy of the plan view and the profile here. This is the plan view. North is to the right on this exhibit. Um, you see some of the contours. The creek, the creek is in the center. What we show is the existing bridge location and existing uh, uh, piers and abutments, and those will stay in place. Those are... Uh, in, in, in good condition, not in perfect, but in good condition. So it's basically from the profiles, taking off the bridge deck and replacing it. And then there is some uh, rework of the road approaches on both sides to get to that uh, transfer because the new deck will actually be about four inches higher than the old deck to get back some of that structural strength and, and capacity and require some rework in the roadway to make that work. Uh, there is also some work and some repair work uh, we're actually doing some patching work, repair work on the abutments and the uh, and the uh, piers. Uh, they're although they're in good condition, uh, they do show some wear. Uh, since it's was built, I think in the 40s, they do show some wear. And there is some repair work done on that. We're basically uh, just uh, covering up any uh, concrete, putting in new concrete, and and uh, putting some uh, uh, wrap around that uh, concrete to secure it for the life of the deck. That looks like a fairly long bridge. How long is that bridge? Uh, it is uh, five sections there, and I'll see if I can tell you. Um, we're at 150. So there is 150, about 150, 175. It's about 150 feet across. Does Bobby, Boggy Creek go under that bridge? Yes. This is uh, Boggy Creek. This is Boggy Creek because it goes under here, so this is the main drainage from the city. That's correct. Does, does it flood very often? Um, is, well, this, the, there is a, I can tell you, I'm going to go back to the map here a little bit, get a little information. Uh, there are, the area back here, there's wide easements on this area back here to allow for uh, for stormwater to uh, to back up, and uh, I haven't seen it going on those easements, and it has not gone over this bridge. It basically, uh, this road has not been inundated, uh, probably since '73. So, it the, the bridge is is protected uh, from the 100-year event. Um, when we did our, our bridge improvement project, we replaced the one to the south because of structural problems, but this one uh, was found to be good in good condition at that time. But since then, the deck has deteriorated. So the bridge is not septic to flooding. This was not. It's up high enough and wide enough that it's uh, it's it's pretty well protected from the uh, flood event. The, the but these areas on both sides, you know, a large vent will spread out in these areas on both sides. To me, the bend above that green pasture right there, wheat or whatever it is, 
Yes, the yeah, creek bends the through here, meanders through there. Uh, when the Corps developed, uh, diverted the uh, uh, flow to this channel, they acquired a wide drainage easement through this mm -hmm. area that uh, pretty well incorporates uh, the storm, uh, the design that, storm event. Do you keep that mode cleared? Uh, operations has gone through and cleared out uh, uh, some of the trees in the channel. We don't, they don't clear them out from the banks too much because they actually hold the bank. They do a good job there. But they have gone through in the past and cleared out uh, uh, the, the trees that are actually in the channel to keep the, the channel open. But some of this is, although we have white easements there, some of this is still, this is still owned by other property owners and they, they farm it and, and use it for pasture. So most of it is maintained by pasture. But operations has gone through and worked on the channel from time to time as needed. Robert, what happens if we have a, a bids that come up a little bit higher than what you estimated? Maybe $1.2 million. What do we do when that happens? Um, well, we have, well, if we have a couple options, either come up and uh, you have the option to come up and uh, uh, find, a addition, find additional revenue or authorize to rebid the project and we redesign and try to rebid the project. Uh, that would be the two options. One of the only I think two options I consider the other option is to close the road, which I don't think anybody's going to consider that. So this is an important road. So those are the two options, I think. But uh, we feel pretty confident about the estimate. We've got a good uh, uh, Pony Associates is our design firm here, and, and uh, we feel confident in their abilities to certainly to design and build these uh, projects and get their estimates. They were they did a number of our projects in our bond issue a number of years ago, and they're quite capable. And as a city, I mean, it, do we have a right? Say you get two bids and one bid is lower, but you feel more comfortable with the bid that's a little bit higher than that to get better quality of work. Do we have the right to go with the bid what the competing, competing what the competing competitive bid act states and requires that uh, that you provide it to you provide the bid to the lowest responsive bidder. However, if you don't do that, you have to state the reason why. I'll leave up the legal three steps to figure out what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to know if we have that that right without having to worry about being sued or anything like that. You're gonna get you your, have to have a really good reason. Your, go yeah. Yeah. I yeah. just think you have to have a really good reason. Yeah, you're gonna um, get fewer bidders. <clears throat> yeah, because you can get someone in that's known to do shiesty work. You know, I mean, I know well, we do qualify bidders, better. right, Robert? Right, right. We would qualify. Okay. And we've turned uh, we people down before if, if we've gotten bids from people that did. Poor work okay. before so we can said, do that. No, yeah. Yeah, okay. we are, and we okay. are actually pre qualified We're actually pre qualifying bidders on this bridge project, okay. so yeah. we will have those pre qualified. So we will, uh, we will have only quality quality bidders on this project. Okay. Most a lot of our projects we post qualify. We get them in, and then if if we have a concern, and we make them, you know, we provide the data to, to qualify. And this one we're going to pre qualify the uh, the bidders, so they will be, we will know we'll have uh, good qualified bidders when we, we take the bids. So that should not be a problem. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Robert. I think we're on <coughs> item four. Update on the airport terminal. Oh no! It's my favorite project. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's one of mine too. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Colonels, uh, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on where we are with the with the uh, terminal now. We've been held back a little bit by rain, but uh, Jim Prater in the back, he's our superintendent for RSM development. He assures me we'll be done by the middle of June, right? Right, Jim? <laughs> you saw him. You saw him nod. Okay. This actually is a different picture than what you've seen before. These are the actual colors that the building will be, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Standard military briefing will show you some pictures, talk about the walls, the ceilings, finishings, and then also uh, the status of the project. I want to review the floor plan here. Uh, if you recall, this is the restaurant portion. This is the business portion. Over here, this is the dining room area. This faces to the southwest. The lobby area here, the kitchen area over here, and then this is the private dining area and or small conference room, if you will. This is uh, the passenger lounge 
and my guys will be conducting the business of the airport right there. We call it the FBO. If you recall the terminal today, as you walk in the building, off to your right, there's a counter, and that's where we take care of the fuel sales and that sort of thing. That will be done right in this area. This will be uh, the operations manager's, Keston's, uh, Keston Cook's office. This is my office. This is the pilot lounge. Uh, and I will tell you that we have made a minor change in the pilot lounge. We looked at this and all of a sudden determined, well, you know, that's a lot bigger than what we really need for a pilot's lounge. And we'd like to have a small conference room for the business side. So we're gonna put a little wall here at minimal expense, a door, and uh, we'll actually have some furniture already that we can put in there. And we'll use it as a pilot or a, uh, a little conference room. It also uh, will second as another briefing room for the joint use planning room. Uh, here's the planning room right here, and here's the two cubby holes back there. We'll have a pretty good sized conference table for, uh, for larger briefings and, and work back there. Uh, these right here, this is storage and uh, janitorial stuff. These are the bathrooms. Now, this, is, this terminal uh, lobby area will be open 24 hours. The bathrooms will be accessible 24 hours. Now, not everyone in the world will be able to walk in there, if you recall. The gates to the airport close at 9.30, and they don't open until 6 in the morning. So really, only people that have business at the airport will have the access to this, uh, the terminal. The pilot's lounge, that will also be accessible by pilots. They will have a special code that we will give them in case they come in in the middle of the night, and they'll be able to get to that. Okay, some pictures, uh, groundbreaking. This was September 24th, and you can see the skies are already starting to rain. Uh, actually, it was pretty dry here during the excavation. Looks a lot different now. Uh, large area of, of slab, pouring the slab, erecting the steel. You can see the steel coming up right there. And this is the business portion of the building. You can also see back here the beginnings of the parking lot. A low looking uh, view, if you will. These are, these are called dense glass. It's like, it's, a, um, it's like drywall, but it's not. It's, uh, it, it, it's got insulation and stuff like that. It's specifically designed for the sides. The guys don't normally put them up this early, but there's no harm in doing it. And we allowed them to do it to get out of the wind and the cold a little bit. As you can see here, the, the restaurant section is going up the very high uh, ceiling on that side. And this is a view that I took today from the control tower, and you can see a lot of the studs going up in there as well. So a lot of the walls are going up, the roof is coming together, and uh, a little bit more of the parking lot is done. Okay, I'm going to talk about colors a little bit, and then I've got some actual uh, renditions to show you. This is the terminal. Uh, it's the, it's a light gray with black trim. You can see the black trim. This is not light gray. I don't know why they came through that way. This is a brick, and I've got a copy of the brick to show you. This is a better view of what it looks like. This is the business portion from the, uh, from the, the parking lot, the brick veneer. And then another view of the same, a little bit closer this time. Okay. I'll go over to the floor plan and tell, tell you a little bit about the uh, finishes, and then we'll look at the actual uh, examples that I brought with us. The flooring, for the most part, is going to be a luxury vinyl tile. It's a very nice tile. This area in here, this is the uh, restaurant portion. That will be a darker one. It looks a little bit like, um, like willow, like um, they call it bark. It's kind of a bark color, if you will, a light bark. This area is the private dining. That'll be a light gray, and the lobby will be that bark, if you will, uh, as well. The entranceways will have a very uh, tough finished uh, carpet for, uh, that, that will preserve. That, that'll take care of the, uh, the messes people bring in with their shoes, if you will. The kitchen area is actually tiled. The floor is tiled. And then the walls in the kitchen are stainless steel. The rest of it is white with some gray touches and also some dark black uh, trim. The ceiling is white. The business side, if you can see this wavy line, that's all carpeting. 
throughout. This area right here is uh, concrete because it is basically storage area, janitorial area. And then the bathrooms have a tile floor, then they have a tile wall. The rest of the walls throughout here are a light white with some gray trim, and the ceilings are white. And if we could look at the renditions real quick. This, this is the uh, brick that will be on the side of the business side. Okay, uh, here's the kitchen area right here. You can see the flooring. This is the bark uh, luxury vinyl tile I was mentioning. Here's the lobby area. Here is the passenger lounge, and you can see it there. Um, this is the vinyl that will go in the private dining area. Uh, these are a couple of the, uh, the countertops, if you will, uh, quartz. This is a, an accent, if you will, for the counters in the kitchen. These are the colors we talked about throughout the rest of the building. Uh, here's the carpet, and then these are the tiles for the bathroom, the floor, and then the sides. Any questions? On the windows in the dining area that uh, you can see the runway? Yes. Yeah, that was one of the principal uh, going in positions. Okay. So status, again, we, we started on 24th of September. There has been a lot of delays because of the weather and for forever it looked like all they were doing is moving mud from left to right. But uh, as you can see, it's come quite a ways. The projected finish, the middle of June, we, we will, once we move into the building about two weeks later, we'll have a ribbon cutting. Uh, you'll know when that is. Uh, the remaining furnishings and equipment in the old terminal, right now we are determining what we will bring into the new terminal, what furnishings we will purchase. And you'll recall we purchased a bunch of kitchen equipment a few weeks ago. That will go into the new terminal. The stuff that remains, we will use the city online auctioning uh, service to auction those things off, use that extra money to maybe buy a few other things that we might need for the terminal. And four to five weeks later, the old terminal will be taken down and replaced with grass for the time being. Any questions? How many more parking spaces will you have? We'll have about the same that we have right now. It's about uh, 55. 55? You find that's usually sufficient anyway, right? It is. Uh, you know, occasionally it, it gets kind of crowded, but, uh, but we can find other places to park people if we need them, like events that we have down there. Well, the, the new terminal is being basically built directly behind the existing terminal. Yes, that's, that's correct. correct. When you mentioned when it's when the, uh, when the old terminal is uh, demolished, uh, there's going to be sod put in there. Will, will that be between the, the passengers and the, and the taxiway or the runway? It, it will for time being, and there'll be there's sidewalks taking you out to the ramp area. Uh, my envision is somewhere down the road we'll fill all that in with concrete, and we'll actually build the the, the parking apron closer to the. <coughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking about. It looks like that would be, uh, make it a little more convenient. Right. Be less maintenance than sod. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> more room to park airplanes. Yes. I'll take it. Here you go. <laughs> Anything else? Any questions? Okay, thank you. Item five, we are adjourned. We'll meet upstairs at 6.30. Thank you for watching the Enid City Commission study session. All meetings are broadcast on local cable channel 12 and in high definition on channel 112. In addition, the study session is live streamed on the web at enatv.org. If you have any questions or comments regarding this broadcast, please visit the City of Enid website at enid.org.